Hi everyone, so in today's video we're going to be looking at Topaz Sharpen AI and I'm actually going to be taking some photos I took in Africa and using Sharpen AI to sort of try to get them a little bit sharper, maybe correct a few that are out of focus and give you sort of a swath of a couple different uh, photos. So a little bit of background on the trip. So this is a trip that my father and I went on back I think in like 2009. I had the Nikon D90 and I also had this lens here which is the 80 to 400 VR version. I think it's the ED, it's the D version. So this doesn't autofocus on the newer Z mounts. So it's unfortunately probably gonna go up for sale soon, but it's an amazing lens if you are a digital SLR shooter and being 80 to 400, um, there's definitely a huge amount of reach to it, but you do pay a little bit in the softness of the lens for having a telephoto versus say a prime or a f2.8 telephoto which is just simply better glass so with that in mind with the d90 let me show you some photos that i've taken and let's see if we can use topaz sharpen ai to make them a little bit better all right i'm going to drag over a photo now this is some bird i saw in africa um, obviously i'm going to use photos that are not the greatest and you can see here right away that it's updating in the live preview and it updates and this is just me dropping it in here, out of focus versus focus. Literally, I have an affiliate link below. If you want to use it to buy Topaz Sharpen AI, feel free to do so. But we're going to continue. But yeah, like it's that easy and that, that, that crazy. This was out of focus. It's now in focus. Now, that's just with this set in out of focus and very blurry. All right, so we're back into Topaz. We'll bring in our second bird. And this guy here, as you can see, is a much higher resolution photo. Whereas before, the box had no zoom in. It was showing us the whole photo. This here, the box is much more toned in. And we're just going to move the box a little bit here. It's going to redo the updating of the preview. And again, it's currently set to automatic, just to give you an idea of what you're getting. And there you go. Now for this, in the wings, it's okay. The improvement's there but you can definitely see here that there is some sharpening done in the beak. Now I'm going to change this instead of to too soft, I'm going to change it to out of focus and see what it does. And one of the things I like about this is that there are, depending on what your photo subject, etc., is, you can sort of figure out what option it is. Now this one here is sharpened. So it's gone and sharpened stuff. Now, the one thing I like about this is it brought in more feather definition. However, you can see here in the face that it's just sort of gone a little crazy. If we pick motion blur, we're going to see that it's going to treat the image uh, completely different. And there you go. So for this one here, I would say motion blur might be the better pick. And again, you can play around with the sliders a bit. I generally find that auto tends to be pretty good. If you don't want to run auto, I would generally say click auto to get the, the settings that they have and then maybe back it off. I find if you go way too high, it tends to make things worse. So if, like I said, remove all the blur, it's going to sit here, it's going to process this out and you're going to see that it removes all the blur, but it over sharpens the image by a significant margin. So the next photo I have is of an elephant. And what you can see here is that on the left, I was already pretty sharp, I got it, but this is where I was pushing the limit of what the lens could do. And therefore, when I'm running it through the sharpener, I'm not looking to try to make it super blurry or uh, super sharp or anything like that, but I'm just trying to improve a bit of the sharpness, a bit of the sort of the chromatic abrasion and whatnot, and pull everything into focus. And here you can definitely see that I've gone from the trunk being relatively the same, there's a little bit more definition in the features of the skin. Um, but here on the actual tusk, you can definitely see here that the lines are cleaner and sharper, um, whereas they weren't here before. And I've pulled back that um, depth of field that sort of blurred a bit of the photo, which occurs when you're dealing with low light photography and you're trying to get the fastest uh, lowest ISO possible, especially on some of the older or more entry-level cameras where pushing the ISO definitely causes a lot of noise and then you're trying to remove a lot of noise and grain 
from your photos, which can be quite difficult. So I like this one here. I'll hit save and away it goes. So here are the two photos side by side. And as you can see here, the one on the left, which is the original photo, was a good photo. I got the eagle, it was sharp, it was in focus, and it looked really good. But when you look at the photo on the right, which is the one I ran through Topaz AI, there's a lot more sharpness in here. Now, some people might say a little bit too much sharpness, but the eagle really pops off the background. It really shows like the eagle is now in the foreground, solidly in the foreground. It almost looks like I went and took a photo of an eagle and then added it in Photoshop with the background. And I know that some people might comment, well, you should get better glass, etc., and take the photo on the right using like a prime lens and stuff, because that's high-end professional photographers do. They have spent a tremendous amount of money on professional telephoto prime lenses to be able to take the picture on the right directly into the camera. But for most people with telephoto zoom lenses, the picture on the left is about the best that you can get. And that's because there is a trade-off for having that ability to zoom and in some cases autofocus as well. So here is the real value of Topaz Sharpen AI. While yes, it will correct your blurry photos and it will make corrections for poor photography, the reality is that what it allows you to do is basically take a professional zoom lens and give it that look that you can get out of a prime lens. That additional sharpness that generally costs thousands of dollars more is available for under $100 and about maybe a minute, depending on if you want to play around with the sliders or uh, as much. Now, some people might say it's a little bit of cheating, but the reality is this is the competition you are going against in today's world. Everyone's got computers that are powerful enough to run this kind of AI software, and people who are taking pictures with the best of the best lenses are still looking at using a bit of sharpening to just get that edge over the competition. So. While I don't want to push a particular product and say, hey, my link is below, this is definitely a piece of software that I would say you should seriously consider if you're doing bird photography or really any type of photography where you're trying to produce the best quality image with the lenses you have. Because ultimately, when you're putting an investment in camera gear, lenses, lenses, lenses. But if you're on a budget, lens plus topaz gets you pretty damn close. So that's it for Topaz Sharpen AI. It's amazing software. Yes, the version 3.0 has definitely kicked it up a notch, but you are gonna spend a bit more time processing the photo. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like um, and consider sticking around for the next one. We're gonna be looking at Topaz Denoise AI, where for low light photography and astrophotography, which are my two big fun things, definitely, definitely can use some denoising to make them look like they were shot during the day. And I think this time we're gonna go to Vienna. In fact, I know we're gonna go to Vienna because I have the photos that I took in Vienna and I wanna see if I can make them even better. <laughs> so let's go to Vienna.